Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have just started working on this Playmatic New World Pinball Machine. Made in Spain. A little different than the stuff we usually get in. But a customer brought this by and wanted to know if we could fix it. And we said we sure can. And so we decided we would start working on it for him. Now we, we already did one video where we kind of showed the condition it was in when we got it in. And the ways that it kind of differs from some of the, the more popular machines like uh, the Gottlieb, the Williams, the Bally, the Stern <laughs> machines. Um, but today we're going to start working through it and fixing it. Now at the end of the last video, we plugged it up. And what seemed to be wrong with it was that the score motor just keeps turning and turning and turning and turning and turning. And so we looked in the schematics just to kind of illustrate, and there are about 10 different relays that can make that score motor do that. So one of those relays is pulled in, or a switch is stuck or something, and it's just running and running and running. And so if you find yourself in that kind of situation, this is what you need to do to get the thing to work. So if you, if you get a machine and it, it just won't start a game, nothing will happen, or you hear stuff moving around and blah, 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 you need to systematically go through it and clean all of the switches. So these machines, they sit around for a long time. They get All the switches get dirt and dust and oxidation and uh, whatever all over them. And then they will no longer do the thing that they are supposed to do. So that's kind of the only way to get these EMs, if they haven't been worked on in a while, to get them back doing their thing. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on the mech board, they call it, in the bottom of the cabinet. And it's the board that's got all the relays, the score motor, and all of that on it. It's kind of the heart of the machine. And the mech board in the bottom works in tandem with the light board in the back, which is the, the part behind the uh, back glass, to make the game work. So we're basically going to go through and clean all of the relays, all of the switches, hundreds of them. And you get to see what we find out. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop this play field out and get it out of the way. It just unplugs. So I'm going to tip it up, unplug the two plugs or however many it is, and then carry that in the other room so that we can easily get down into the bottom of the cabinet. All right, so we pop the play field out of it. And here's the mech board in the Playmatics. Thing probably hasn't been cleaned up in a while, so we'll clean it up. Um, where are my keys? I guess I don't need them. <laughs> well, I guess I do need them. Um, so we'll uh, we'll take that out, and the the board itself usually will unplug. So you can, like for instance, you can unplug these chimes. And you can unplug this front door. Well, I'll try to. There we go. So now we're down to nothing's plugged in up here. We've still got the wiring going up into the head to plug the board in and also the power. Uh, line, uh, but a lot of times you got enough wiggle room where you can bring the board up and set it on the top of the cabinet so you can work on it a little bit. You can also work on it down in the game if you want. Um, just depends on what you prefer. This one's in there crooked, probably because there's a screw loose or something. I was looking, yeah, there we go. So, this screw here that holds it in place, the one's already been removed from the back, so it may be rolling around in here somewhere. Or maybe we can find one that'll fit it. But you take those loose. Sometimes there's a couple other screws or something, depending on the manufacturer. And then you can lift that whole board up and set it on the top of the machine where you can get to it a little bit better. And that'll also make it where you can uh, clean underneath it. So let me lift that up out of there and we'll see what the bottom of the cabinet looks like. Got it up and out of there. Now I had somebody leaving a comment earlier where they said, that they like watching the videos, but it all looks so complex. It's so complicated. There's so much stuff going on. It does appear that way, but if you work on them a little bit, um, basically what you're trying to do is divide it down into smaller steps, which are easier to, 
to work through. So yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of wires, there's crap everywhere. How do you even know where to start? Well, that's what we're showing you. You break it down into little tiny bite-sized pieces that make it easy to do. So, for instance, we think, okay, the thing doesn't work. What are we going to do first? Well, the first thing we're going to do, let's work on the bottom panel because it's kind of the main brain of it. So let's do that. So how do we do that? Well, the next thing we need to do is we need to take the play field out so we can get to it. Okay, well then what do we do? Well, you take a couple screws out and then you get the thing up where you can mess with it. Okay, and then what do you do? And it's just step by step by step. You make it as small as possible. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to vacuum out the inside and get that as clean as we can. And I'm going to try to vacuum a lot of this off if I can. Uh, these Playmatics, they silk screened what the relays are right on the board. Um, a lot of them they just put paper, but th this is like a um, like an, another MDF board like the cabinet's made out of. Um, and it's got a silk screened or stamped maybe um, top sheet there where you can read what everything is, uh, which will be helpful when we're troubleshooting it. So uh, let me get the vacuum, we'll clean it up a little bit. There was a little bit of stuff down in it, but nothing all that special. So there was this, for instance. Can you tell what this is? That's the ring for the tilt. So the tilt, the way it works, is there's this long bar here, and as you shake the machine, that thing jumps around. All right? And then this ring mounts right there. And so as you shake it, if this metal touches the ring, that tilts it. And so they've disconnected it by removing the wire from the ring and just taking the ring off. I guess if this thing were to turn and actually touch this wire, <laughs> that would tilt it too. So uh, they've removed the ability to tilt. I don't know why they'd do that. And then there's a couple little pieces of could be glass. Maybe that's plexiglass. So that may be the end of a couple of the plastics have chipped off. Um, the, the way they end up in the bottom of the cabinet is they go down the play field, so they break on the play field and then they go down and they get in the out hole and then eventually they fall through into the bottom of the cabinet. A couple old rings. Um, this tag Remember, this is a Spanish game made in Spain, Barcelona, Spain. Manga F. Modelo New World, numero 548, Fija, <laughs> September 30th, and then that says 78, it looks like, but uh, these supposedly were made in 1976. If it was made in 78, it would probably be a solid state game because all the companies have moved to solid state, solid state, including Playmatic. So I hate to say that it's wrong, but I think it is. I think that's supposed to be a 76. And then I guess the face means inspection. So 303, 397, and then estanata, 365. Very cool. So that was in the bottom of it, and um, we already went through that stuff. There's a schematic. Uh, that's about it. Oh, this little piece of paper. So there's a little piece of paper in here that appears to have pictures. Now remember, this is a Spanish machine, but it was probably operated in the United States. But it appears to have pictures of cars. Doesn't that look like cars in a parking lot or something? And then on the back, somebody has drawn just some lines on it. So I don't know what that is. It's a little too thin to be like an envelope. I thought like it was an envelope. You know, sometimes they've got a pattern in it, so you can't read what's in the envelope. But it's a little too thin. It's like 
kind of thin paper. So what is that, people? Can you recognize it? I don't know. All right, so let me get the vacuum cleaner, and I'll vacuum it out, clean it up a little bit, and see if we can clean this board off a little bit, too. All right, so we got her cleaned up a little bit. Got all the dirt out of there. Got this a little cleaned off where you, we can read it now, which isn't incredibly important, but... Uh, so we're ready to start messing with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each relay loose, one at a time, and we're going to clean the switches. Now, they're held in place different ways, but on this Playmatic, they have a little clip, a hairpin clip, they call it, that holds it onto this bar. So each company's are a little different because they're all patented. Patented. So... This one, there's two sets of switches on each, you know, one on each side. So there's eight switches. Each switch has two blades. And when the relay energizes, it pulls this little plate in, which closes the switches. So basically, we're going to go through and clean all the contacts on all these switches. You can do it with like an emery board or a contact cleaner or you can buy little things for it. What we use is like an old like a needle file that's worn out so it doesn't have much abrasion on it because you don't want to eat up the contacts. You don't want to go crazy on it. But you're basically trying to take all the dirt off of the contacts. So if they're dirty what happens is electricity needs to pass through them and if they're dirty when they touch the electricity doesn't pass through. It's almost like a coating. It's like if you cut, if you paint a piece of metal and then another piece of metal, when you touch them together, the electricity doesn't pass through them because it doesn't go through the paint. So basically, these have been painted with dirt. So we're going to go through and clean every one like that, and then we have to make sure that they actually the switches. You got to look really close at them, and whenever the relay closes, if they're open, when it closes, they should touch, and if they're closed, when the relay closes they should open so they should just reverse whatever they are um, so like this first one here see it's closed this one and when it goes in it opens see how it's not touching now now it is not okay now notice we didn't need to look up and see what that's supposed to do it's closed right now, so it should change whenever this pulls in. So if it's closed, it should open. If, it op if it's open, it should close. So you don't really need to know what each switch even does. You just need to get it where they're doing what they're supposed to do. Resist the urge, though, to, to adjust every switch. You don't want to do that. You want to just adjust the ones that are obviously screwed up. So if one looks like it's touching, but you can't tell if it's touching enough, just leave it. It's probably fine. If one's clearly not touching, adjust that one. The problem you would run into is if you go through and adjust all of them, you're probably going to get some screwed up and you're going to create problems that aren't there already. The things kind of adjust themselves as they're playing. They kind of get in a groove. So theoretically, they're pretty much in a groove right now from the last time they were played, but they're just all dirty because they've been sitting around. The worst thing you can do to these things is just let them sit. So if you clean it and get it all working and then you let it sit and you don't play it for three or four years, when you turn it back on, you'll probably have some problems because some of those switches have probably gotten dirty or corroded or whatever. So uh, we're going to go through and check all of these and just one by one clean all of those switches. It's going to take a while, but then we'll know that all of those, all of the switches are nice and clean and you won't have to mess with it again. This isn't something you have to do every two or three years. It's something that you, hopefully you do once every 40 or 50 years. That's what we're shooting for, at least. So uh, I'll go through them. If I've run into anything that looks weird or messed up or, or different, I'll film it. But that's basically what I'm going to be doing for the next half an hour or so. Okay, so I cleaned all those. I didn't run into anything really weird, but I did tape the wrappers back on. A lot of the wrappers were um, coming off, 
a couple I already had. So I just scotch taped them back on. Okay, so that's all of the stand-up relays. Some of them are a little different than the other ones. You know, they uh, they uh, uh, might have a different arrangement of blades and all that. But the, the blades are nice and thick on these. The switch stacks aren't loose. Some people worry about that. Um, everything seems cool. So all of those are clean now. They were dirty, so hopefully that'll get it. Next thing we're going to do, this is the score motor. So again, we're just trying to break it down into little pieces to make it easier to, to work through. So I just, you know, basically by doing that, we just knocked out all this. All of this stuff we're done with. All of that we're done with. So there's only a few things left on this mech board. So next up, we're going to do the score motor. So let me show you something that's common on this. Um, basically, this motor turns on and these wheels start turning. These cams start turning. And as they turn, they have little bumps on them. Let me brighten it up so you can see it a little better. Because this one's got a really interesting thing going on. I can show you. Nice and bright. Okay. So see how these cams... Now, they're different on each machine. This is a Playmatic. It's a little weird. A little different because it's a Spanish one. Um, weird as in just different from what we're used to. Um, see the little bumps? So they make the switches connect as it goes around and hits those. Now see this one, how it has a little divot where it, it makes the switch fall. Right? So you can see right away that there's a big problem here. See how this top one is bent way up? Well, when that turns, see how that top switch never closes? Let's try and get it where you can... See it goes down in the divot, and then when it comes back up, it never touches. Now, why is that like that? That's pretty common on the ones that are on the top. It's because since the, the machine's, this is on the bottom of the machine, you open the coin door, if you stick something in there, like the schematics, anything, put your hand in there, you might hit one of these top blades and bend it up. You can see over here it wouldn't really, you know, but it's real common on these score motors to hit the blade and bend it. You know, you push something in and it gets stuck and you can't figure out what's going on. Well, you just bent the blade. So... How are we going to fix that? Well, we're going to bend it way down. <laughs> you can actually get like a little tool to bend it back on the on the back part, right? Depending on how many you have to mess with. Sometimes you can just do it with your hand. Okay, so it's up right now, so it's, we don't have it quite right yet. So when it goes down, it should be disconnected. And it is. It's not touching. And when it goes up, it should be touching. It is. All right. So that switch was definitely screwed up. But I think this one is too. <laughs> so does this one ever touch? Nope. Yep, it gets its hit. So the way you can tell is the big one should make the little one move just a little bit. All right. So bouncing, so it's fine. So you, you'll run into that a lot, though, where one on the top will be bent up a little bit and it doesn't connect. I wonder what. So that's the index, and it's the top switch on the index. I wonder what that did. Okay, so that particular switch is this index E here, which means that it would make it where this N with a line over it. J2, J3, and J4 would never work. They'd never be able to get power. And if you look up here, that is the match relay, the second player, the third player, and the fourth player relay. So without that working, you would have never been able to start more than a one-player game. So that's kind of important, isn't it? But that's probably not our problem with the score motor turning over and over and over again. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the score motor. I'm going to clean all of those switches, and I'm going to see the same thing. You know, you got to clean them, and I'm going to carefully watch them and make sure that all of them seem to be closing or opening, and especially pay attention to the top ones because they're the most likely to get bent out of place like that one was. So we cleaned all those. I didn't run into anything else weird. Uh, next up, we have this big stepper unit here that's kind of like a pancake, I'm calling it. Uh, let me see if I can stand it up, st 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 stand it up. That one might need to be back in there, let's see. 
There we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, so it's just like, it's a stepper unit, you know, it's, it's similar to the ones that we've been looking at so much on the valleys lately. Um, things actually be stepping just fine. I'm trying to see what's up with these switches here. Okay, see, so I'm up here. I guess I need to go back the other way. Eventually that will open those switches. Alright, so we got to make sure that works right. And then we have to take that flat piece off the top. So I'm going to clean those switches, make sure that whenever it gets back that it's opening them at the last position and then that is closed at the first position that it comes off of. And then uh, we'll take the, the top off and see what that looks like. Uh, interesting design really, but Again, some of the Gottlobs are very similar to this with the even the same uh, mounting system. But they're just not usually down flat in the bottom of the cabinet. Usually they mount um, in the back box like that. Uh, so let's take, the, uh, let's take the top off of it so we can see how that looks and clean it up. Okay, so I popped that off. Now, whenever you do something like that, you want to move the... I'm not going to touch it now, but you want to move the... Uh, relays until it's all the way one way or the other you know so that you know how to put it back on so the way I did it was I went all the way back to where these three pins are on that first contact there so I can put it back on right in the exact same spot you can figure that out later if you screw it up but it's just a big pain right so it's better to just kind of visually see it some people mark it with some paint or something too so that you can line up the two yellow lines or something um, whenever it's all the way reset, but so you can see how this works. Um, it's you see the little uh, flakings, metal flakings there too. That's kind of interesting. Looks like little pieces of brass. Uh, but basically, the, these little pins on the bottom of this, so like those three there, for instance, two of them are connected together, and then the other one is connected to a, a strap that goes to the middle. This would connect to that, which is probably connected to ground. Okay, so as it turns around, this inside track is connecting to ground as it turns, and so they have different wires going to different little metal pieces. And then on the outside one, the two that are connected together, these two, when they start, they're connecting right here, but then it moves, and now it's connecting this to this, and then this to this, and then this to this, and then this to this, and that's how they use to do things like count up a bonus or whatever. Which one of you is calling? Uh-huh, got scared, huh? But, uh, so that's that's just, you know, how all stepper units work, basically. This is, these are, this is a common design, but like I said, it's usually not um, laid down flat like this, which doesn't really matter much. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is like we do on all steppers, we're just going to clean this as good as we can. So just whatever you want to clean it with. And then what I do is I take a little bit of light sandpaper, very light sandpaper. I did not say get the grinder out. Light sandpaper and scuff that up so that it looks nice and shiny. So we want to get that as clean as we can and then we're going to put a little bit of grease back on it. So uh, let me clean it up and we'll see what it looks like after that. Cleaned her right up. Now we're going to put a little bit of this on there. Synthetic grease. I put this beep on everything. If you're metal to metal use this stuff. And you want to use this particular type, or a type like this at least, because it's dielectric. Which means that if you put like the wrong stuff on here, it will connect this and this just through the actual uh, grease. If it conducts electricity, it literally can start fires and stuff. You don't want to do that. So this stuff's safe for it. It's what you want to use. And the reason that you're putting it on there is just so that it, it makes it where the metal doesn't wear as much and then also it get it lets it skate a little bit, you know, where it's a little lubricated. Um, so we got that all cleaned up. We're going to put this on there and then we're going to put the, the wafer back on the top right in the position it was in originally in the reset or the all the way advanced position one way or the other, whichever way you chose to do it. 
And then uh, think about it. We did all the relays. We did the score motor. We did that. Oh, I checked the fuses while I was at it, too. So it looks like it's really complex, but there's really not that much stuff. It just looks like there's a bunch of stuff because there's so many wires. So let me pop that back on. Okay, so before we finish it up, let me show you something really cool about these playmatics. If you look on the schematics, see this? Uh, this is the transformer. So there's a 7-volt winding that does all the light bulbs and stuff. And then there's a 28-volt wind, uh, winding for the coils. Or I guess for that one coil, whatever. Okay, but look, there's a... No, it's 30-volt, I'm sorry. Well, whatever, we'll see. But look how they have these little things here that they draw in. And then they draw the bumpers, like the thumper bumpers, the pop bumpers, with a slate wire that plugs in. See the little arrow that plugs in? And then they draw the flippers with a maroon wire that plugs in. And see the different voltages? When you plug the play field in, there's a little jack where you can select the voltage that you plug <laughs> the um, the flippers and the pop bumpers into. So it's built in where you can make the flippers more powerful and the pop bumpers more powerful if you want. Gottlieb had a similar thing, but you had to change a uh, a wire soldered on the uh, on the uh, transformer, and they called it. Uh, Highlining, what, what do they call that? Not highlining, something like that. You could, you could basically, you could change a, a wire to make the, everything more powerful. And the reason they do it like that is in case you have a, a location where the voltage is lower than it should be. Uh, we kind of have the, the opposite problem here in our shop. The voltage is like 125 volts out of the wall, which is strong, brother, strong. But I guess in some places, and you know, depending on how the uh, electrical grid is, it's it might be 110 or even lower. And of course, if you're overseas, it might be lower. So that that was intended as you could change it to make up for low voltage um, in a location. But since it's like that, you know, there's nothing saying you can't put the pop bumpers and the flippers on 33 volts, even if you do have strong uh, wall voltage to make everything stronger. So we'll probably, we'll probably mess around with that a little bit whenever we uh, get it all back together. But we got the platter back together. Look at that. I cleaned it all up, too. Look how nice it looks. Now on these, whenever they have these little pins, I put one little drop of oil on them, but then I clean it all off because you don't want the oil connecting like this one and this one together if you get sloppy with it because it will conduct. But you want them where they can move in there. And where they're going to, the pin needs to con connect to the uh, the spring and all that crap. Well, I guess it doesn't need to because it goes to that one. But you want it where the stuff moves like it should. Okay, and I put it back on where it goes. Where is my where is my coil? I don't know if I can get to it. Check it out. We're moving, we're moving. Doing its thing. So it's all the way one way. On this particular model, these pins end up on the very last connection. Go back the other way. And on this particular model, the pins end on the other last connection. So I think we've probably got that right. I also think we've got most of these relays probably right. There might be some problems that we'll find out later. We also did these relays. We also did the score motor. Now on the fuses, what you want to do on those is take the fuse out, maybe bend the little connectors back a little bit so that they hold it nice and tight, and then check to make sure it's got the right value fuses in it. It's super common. Like 70-80% of the time they've got too big of a fuse in it which can cause you all kinds of trouble. You can burn stuff up, the thing might even catch on fire. It's not the fuse that does it, but the purpose of a fuse is if something shorts, it should blow that fuse. If the fuse is the weak link. If the fuse won't blow, whatever burns up or shorts or whatever might catch on fire. So 
you want to make sure that the fuses are right. And all of these were right, so even though it's a, uh, it's a Spanish-made one, but I think it was operated in the United States. A lot of times if they're uh, operated overseas, people think that they're, um, they hacked them up and didn't use the right parts and all that because they couldn't get them, but you know, fuses you can get everywhere. But these are the, uh, these are the right ones, so very cool game. So the only thing I have to do uh, before putting it back in is I need to clean the Jones plugs. So basically these plug in, they get tarnished. They're kind of, uh, you know, a little, little oxidized. So I'm just going to clean them up with some very, very fine sandpaper. Don't go crazy with it. And these are the ones that go to the, uh, uh, the chimes. So we'll clean those up. And then we can lay it back down in there. There was a, uh, um, in the uh, past, they've replaced the line cord to have some electrical tape on it, but it looks like they were just doing it, not because it was spliced, but just because part of the, uh, the covering was cut, so that's no big deal. Uh, so we don't have to replace that. But I think we're ready to put it back down in there, and uh, I'll clean those up, and we'll slide it back in and see. What, what we'll do is at the end of each video, we'll see if we get any farther than we did at the previous video. See if that fixed anything messing with this. <laughs> so uh, let me clean those and we'll throw it back down in there. Much better. I found a uh, bolt too that fit the thread in the back. So now the thing's in there all straight like it's supposed to be. Look at that. Man, that looks amazing. We're turning back time here, folks. We're making it back how it's supposed to be. Okay. So at the end of the first video, we tried plugging it in and turning it on. And it just, as soon as you turned it on, the score motor would start turning, and it just did that constantly. So let's see if it's still doing that. So maybe uh, unplugging the play field would make that stop, or maybe rebuilding these would, or cleaning those would make that stop. So let's see if it's still doing it. It's still doing it. Somebody early, uh, on an earlier video was saying that it was really cool seeing the score motor, so I'll just show you some of it, just so you can see how they do their thing. All right, so we didn't fix whatever's wrong with it yet. But I am not deterred. It's going to be something in the back box. I can feel it. I don't know why there would be something in the back box making it do it, though. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, remember? Oh, no, I was looking at something else. Remember we looked at all of the things that could make the score motor turn. I wonder if any of them are in the back box. Doesn't really matter. We're going to go through and clean everything anyway. So we were looking at the schematics. Here's the motor. Any of these relays make it turn. So index C shouldn't be it because it's on the score motor. We should have fixed that. So C, Y, and X can do it. X is the 5,000 point relay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying, right? Come on, people. Come on, people. 5,000 point relays in the back box. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, is it? Yeah. No, it's not. It's right there. It's right there. Oh, man, so that ain't it. I done fixed that one. I'm positive. So the C relay... We're looking for something that's in the back box. The C relay surely is the start relay. Yep, start relay, it's going to be down here. So that ain't it. Uh, the Y and the H. Okay, the Y relay is the balls relay. Still haven't figured that one out. And the 500 point relay. I think that might be it.
Yeah, that's going to be it. 500 point relay. That's my guess. So basically any any relay being stuck in or switch stuck or something can make that score motor turn. So It was nothing on the mech board. So did we just waste our, this entire video, all the work on this video? Well, of course not. All this needed to be cleaned anyway. Now we know it ain't none of this stuff, hopefully. So if, you, if you've got one you're working on, now it may not be a Playmatic. It may be a Williams or a Bally or a Gottlieb. I'm supposed to say Gottlieb. Uh, Gottlieb. A Gottlieb, a Bally, or a Williams. They all work about the same. Now things are, you know, they look a little different, but it's the same concept, people. So if you're trying to work on one and fix one, you can do the same thing that we're doing here. Um, now, the point of these videos is not uh, for me to get rich off YouTube, because I'm not getting rich off YouTube. Uh, the point of the videos is not to show off, because clearly I don't know what I'm doing on some of this stuff. The point of the video is to inspire you to think, hey, if this guy can do it, then I can surely do it, right? So I'm just trying to show you. These are a lot easier to fix than you think. You just work through them. Come up with the system. Systematically work through them. So that's what we're doing. So we're done with this stuff, hopefully. So next up, we're going to do the stuff in the back box. So you'll have to wait till next time, though, to see that. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And uh, thank you to everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, down below there is a link to Amazon. If you're going to buy something on Amazon... Click our link first, and it gives us some of Jeff Bezos' money. He doesn't even know about it. But they have an Amazon Associates program where basically if you go to buy anything on Amazon and I sent you there with that link, they give me a little piece of it. Eventually, I'm going to take all of his money from him. By the way, we're not getting rich off Amazon either, but I'm just, you know, it's funny, so I'm saying. <laughs> but we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And then finally, oh no, not finally, second to last, Check out our website, lionsarcade.com. You can see all of our games for sale, stuff like that. We don't have any pinballs right now, but maybe by the time you see this video, we'll have plenty of them. Uh, but you can see all of our arcade games and pinball machines and jukeboxes and stuff that we have for sale right now on that website. We keep it up to date. Let's go check that out. And there's also a parts page on there that has links to some of the stuff we use in our videos, like, for instance, our synthetic grease that we like so much. You can go buy some on our parts page. You can also buy t-shirts and all that good stuff if you want to support the channel. And then finally, 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 make sure to check out My Brother Donnie. That is our brother channel here, and My Brother Donnie is quite a character. So if you like wa watching me work on these old pinball machines, you might like watching he and I uh, work on old buildings. He's bought a bunch of buildings, and little tiny buildings, inexpensive buildings, in this town near here. Um, that some of them are run down, and we're trying to renovate the buildings to help revitalize their downtown area block. Their downtown block, really. Uh, so go check that out if you haven't. I'm over there with them all the time. It's called My Brother Donnie, and the link is down below. So we appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Leave your comments below. Give us a thumb up, thumbs up an odd number of times, and we will see you on the next video.